This podcast is the first of a series of podcasts dealing with follow-up of melanocytic lesions with digital dermatoscopy. Follow-up of melanocytic lesions with digital dermatoscopy is especially useful for patients with multiple nevon. These patients have an increased risk to develop melanoma, but also they pose a diagnostic dilemma because of the high number of lesions, of melanocytic lesions, it is very difficult to find out a single melanoma in a forest of nevi. There are two strategies to monitor these patients. A lesion-oriented strategy with digital dermatoscopy and a patient-oriented strategy with full-body photography. In this podcast, we will concentrate on lesion-oriented strategy, digital dermatoscopy. Let's view an example. This patient has multiple nevi, and some of them really look what we call atypical. By atypical, we mean it is diagnostically uncertain if these lesions are nevi or early melanomas. For reasons of simplicity, I show only six examples of nevi of this patient. Now, which one is the melanoma? And which lesion do you want to excise? Only one? Two? All of them? And if you excise only one, which one? Well, if you excise more lesions than one, like in this example here with Photoshop, here and here, the patient will not be happy because he's left with many scars and you do not alter the risk of this patient to develop a melanoma somewhere else. So the strategy of wholesale removal of many nevi is not a good strategy. When looking at these six lesions again, it is very difficult to decide which lesion to excise. We need additional criteria. Well. There is one additional criterion that is especially important, which is change over time. Even if the melanoma is completely inconspicuous, and even if a melanoma looks like a nevus, there is one criterion that is always present, change over time. So it was lesion number two that was the melanoma. How do we know? Because the lesion changed, it increased in size, there was a new color black, there's a follow-up of seven months, and we excised it then, and it turned out to be a melanoma inside it. So follow-up adds diagnostic information. Here is another example. It looks like a nevus at the first visit of the patient, but it is not a nevus. It is a melanoma that looks like a nevus. Why do we know? Here, because it's change over time, and you see this eccentric hyperpigmentation with a reticular pattern appeared, and this turned out to be a melanoma too. Impossible to diagnose with the naked eye or with dermatoscopy at the first visit of the patient. Why do we need digital monitoring to diagnose melanomas as early as possible? It's another patient. Where's the melanoma? It's here. How do we know? Because it changed over time. It's a melanoma. The follow-up was 12 months. The melanoma was 0.6 millimeter thick. Here is another example, and you can see the sequence of monitoring. We started to monitor in June 1997. Three months later, the lesion changed, but we did not excise it because then we didn't know how to interpret these changes. And three months later, the lesion uh, was even larger. And then in April 1998, we decided to excise the lesion, and it turned out to be a melanoma. Here's another example. It looks like a nevus, a large one initially at the first visit, but of course, there's change over time. You see these black dots appearing at the periphery, and this eccentric hyperpigmentation, and again, it turned out to be a melanoma. Here's another example. You can see here there's a change over time, although subtle. You can see here the radial lines at the periphery at the first visit, and now here at the follow-up visit, the radial lines are much more obvious. Melanoma in situ. Here is another melanoma that looks like a reticular nevus at the first visit, but at the follow-up visit you can see that there is an eccentric structuralist zone appearing, and this turned out to be melanoma too. Here's another example. Left one first visit, the right one follow-up visit, and you can see there's a new structure appearing 
a, a hyperpigmented part with reticular pattern turned out to be a melanoma in situ. And here's another example, very small lesion, 4 mm in diameter at the first visit, but then there was obvious increase in size, and the increase in size is asymmetric. You can see here new structures and also new colors, melanoma. And here's another example of a melanoma that didn't increase in size, but you can see new structure appearing here, black dots at the periphery, and this also turned out to be a melanoma in situ. Here's another example, very small lesion. Looks like a nevus, but it isn't. Why? Because you see at the follow-up visit there is a new structure appearing, black dots at the periphery, and it's a melanoma in situ. Here's another example, very small lesion, asymmetric increase in size, melanoma. Here's another example, first visit, three years later, five years later, you can see there is a progressive increase in size with new structures appearing, and then after five years, you can see that there are regression structures, white structural zones, and gray dots as a point to regression. You can also see that melanoma grows slowly, and even after five years, the melanoma was still thin. Of course, there are exceptions. Some melanomas grow, grow quickly, but usually, as in this case, melanomas grow slowly, so we have time to catch them. Now, some dermatologists say that what we do with monitoring is that we miss melanoma at the first visit of the patient, and uh, they should have been diagnosed and excised at the first visit of the patient. Well, the answer to this question is they cannot be diagnosed at the first visit of the patient with confidence because these patients have multiple nevi and the melanomas that we catch with monitoring do not show any particular specific features of melanoma at the first visit of the patient. And we tested this. We only showed baseline images to dermatologists and didn't show the follow-up images. We showed them more than 260 nevi but we also showed them 63 melanomas, again, only the baseline images without the follow-up information and compared baseline images only. And we found out that the sens sensitivity for melanoma was, at best, only 27%, which means the dermatologists could not detect this melanoma, these melanomas at the first visit of the patient. Which changes can you expect in nevi? Well, the majority of melanocytic lesions will not change substantially, which means the majority of nevi, even those that are called atypical or dysplastic nevi, will not change during follow-up. By saying this, I mean a follow-up period of one year. If you monitor for 10 years, of course, everything will change. But if you have a reasonable monitoring interval, let's say 6 months or 12 months, you will not find major changes in most nevi of adults. This situation is different in children, but we will but we'll come to that later. So why do we need follow-up? Not only to diagnose melanoma as early as possible, but also to confirm the diagnosis of the melanocytic nevus because if there is no change and to reassure the patient and ourselves. For changing nevi and for melanoma that developed in a pre-existing nevus, please see part two of this podcast series. Thanks for watching.